Okay. I hope I am live. So today we'll be painting uh, Yosemite Chapel and uh, it, I believe it's called uh, Yosemite Valley Chapel and uh, forgive me my English, it's not perfect and let's uh, let's see, so I have already uh, found uh, an image I like best so I like uh, dusk and light but not like dark night so it will be a lot of ultramarine some light and um, I believe I have an image to share so yeah this is uh, a daylight image um, with uh, a tree that is behind the chapel so, and one more image that I really like is this so um, this one doesn't uh, allow you to see the tree behind the chapel but um, I want to, 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 to accentuate that tree. Actually, the chapel will be the point of interest, but uh, the tree is also... I, I, I want to play with the negative spaces that the tree offers uh, to show. So, uh, this... This is... Um, how I um, excuse me for a second. Oh no. So this is how I um, started the whole process so uh, I never start painting on a canvas which is uh, or canvas or canvas board uh, which is from the store because uh, I, I want to have a, an, a priming ready for oils so in this way I, I have um, a priming mixture of Mod Podge glue or actually it could be any uh, water based glue. Uh, I mix it with a little amount of uh, acrylics and a little amount of oil, uh, of excuse me, of water so that it uh, gives uh, a, a, an even thin film that separates the canvas uh, or wood or any other surface uh, that or support from the painting and uh, I do a minimum two layers of that mixture of water based glue in my case it's uh, it's Mod Podge with a little bit of water but it could be uh, a PVA glue or I, I never did any other glue. Uh, I did have uh, the same process done with gelatin or some something else. I forgot, but since Mod Podge is available and it's uh, a good uh, archival uh, glue, when it's dry and it's uh, acid free when it's dry so I use that and then once uh, the two layers are dry I take a poor acrylics or it can be um, any primer, acrylic primer and I just uh, make a thin layer of that 
acrylic primer. So in this case, it's blue color mixed with ultramarine and a little bit of burnt sienna. And uh, it's a nice thin base uh, that uh, that gives uh, a good mint value to the future painting. And so I do the same thing for two times. This is the the video is f four times. Um, the speed uh, is multiplied by four, and um, and this is how I do it. So um, basically, it's just two even coats of uh, the same uh, poor acrylics or. It would be the same effect would be not possible with uh, thick uh, acrylics because they would give uh, a lot of structure uh, but it all depends on what's your end result sometimes I want that uh, texture of uh, acrylic paint so I use a uh, thicker paint and that's it and now that uh, this um, uh, that this excuse me do capture priming okay so priming we ended priming and now let's look at um, how I prepped the painting in acrylics. Wait, does it play? Or, uh, okay, hold on a second. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, this process could be avoided if you have a very strong uh, image of your end painting and in my case I just knew I wanted to paint this chapel w in twilight and in uh, snow and so I am trying to confirm the composition uh, in uh, it's a very schematic value meaning dark and light uh, study so I'm, basically what I'm doing right now it's not that I am doing an underpainting I'm just uh, trying to do this layout for myself uh, <laughs> leaving nothing to imagination and um, basically just uh, Bla uh, blocking in uh, the whole uh, surface, looking where the sky is, where how how large is the chapel. Uh, so it could be in the end, it could be lighter, darker. I'm just uh, looking for shapes for their placement, how well they work with each other, and. Uh, whether the whole painting works at all so um, again this took me probably half an hour to make this underpainting and I decided to uh, pre-record it and to fast forward it because I just want to concentrate on details on um, on, on working oils. Basically, yes. Uh, so today uh, we will be doing working oils. And uh, not to make this stream extremely long, I want to, to do it under an hour. So um, right now I am wiping my brushes because I keep them in oil. And um, 
and wood. And I am, uh, once this video is uh, over, we'll be ready to go in and start developing this composition in oils. So, and again, um, I don't do this acrylic underpaintings every time. Uh, sometimes I have a very strong finish uh, image of the painting and uh, basically I just jump in in oils and um, I don't even have a sketch. Uh, I start with oils. In this case, I was just, I don't know, so something, uh, I was full of doubts. <laughs> so I decided to just, uh, like, uh, you know, like seams, uh, seamstress, uh, before, um, before sewing uh, a dress or a garment, uh, she stitches it. So this is basically stitching the composition. And actually, I am happy I did it. Uh, because I will have several um, several corrections. For example, uh, the, 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 the third tree that is uh, to the right, that is on the border of the painting, is the same height as the chapel. And uh, of course I will uh, change it. Even if it's um, even if your reference or your landscape uh, offers you this, it's a good practice to change it and to make uh, to make objects of different height, uh, thickness, at different uh, distances from each other. So, like, offer this uh, random component that we so often find in nature and uh, what I do because it's acrylics and uh, I didn't dry it with uh, a blow dryer I'm painting an, uh, a layer of thin uh, dull blue um, coat to just uh, indicate where uh, those uh, taller trees on the sides are actually if if you um, if you research uh, yosemite uh, valley chapel you will see that there are pretty tall trees around the chapel but i won't do it i will um actually uh the those two trees on the left they will not be there. I will put something shorter there and uh, to, to, to help the viewer uh, see the perspective and the mountain behind the chapel. So that's my general um, thinking. And actually this uh, blocking in, in acrylics helped me uh, confirm this. And then uh, I did it yesterday, so I also, uh, what you call it, uh, so slept with this uh, idea. And today, when I looked at it with fresh eyes, I saw some, um, the, 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 the original layout uh, doesn't work. So uh, for that tree and for the mountain, to be a more, uh, let's say, and again, it's a small painting, it's an 11 by 14, so there's, uh, there's not much room to, to show all the detail in the background, and of course I won't do all the detail, because uh, paintings are not photographs, they're not meant to, to reflect all the details. So I'm just uh, looking at how I will layer in the shades, whether I should make the chapel brighter, duller, and that's it. So let's uh, move on to today's um, painting. Uh, hold on, yeah. 
biasa. Excuse me, this is my first stream ever. So again, let's see. This is this is what I will have. A mountain in the background, a tree and some evergreen trees in the foreground, and the chapel is the point of interest. And um, another painting that I will uh, not painting photograph that I will uh, reference is this one with um, with the lights and uh, hold on a second where's my okay and I will turn on my over, uh, overhead camera and somehow I lost it uh, again please forgive me this is my first stream I don't even know if I'm streaming the 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 footage says that I am okay and let's okay 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 again let's behind the scenes with more professional streamers okay so yes there we are okay and this is this is what i had yesterday this is my palette in um in a normal kitchen container that prevents the palette from drying. Actually, I wear Christmas sweater, but you cannot see it. Alrighty, so I take a very cheap, cheap stiff uh, bristle brush I don't know, hold on a second uh, I don't know if the camera will focus on it anyways, and I will start with the sky so this is ultramarine blue titanium white and a little bit of magenta I want the sky to be purplish and not very dark. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's go. So I am generally happy with this mix. I will make a little bit more of it and then I will make variations of the same color uh-huh hold on a second and i will also turn on the image the composition the final one okay wait 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 because this is not the photograph that I started with so I'll just have it I don't know probably I'll have it here for me to see what what am I where am I going anyway so the sky 
the sky is uh, again it's um, ultramarine plus titanium light plus a little bit of magenta And the sky is not awfully important. And actually, this is why I changed the original composition uh, because um, the sky would, would be, it would be very hard to understand because all the colors will be similar. It would be very hard to understand uh, what's what's that purple behind the trees is it sky is it lighter uh, rocks in the background okay so let's see uh, actually the camera somehow shows it a bit a bit lighter than it is in fact it's darker so i will try to learn to make the adjustments as we go. I hope I, this is not my last stream. Anyways, so now we move on to the rocks in the background. And actually the rocks between the branches of uh, the tree. So for this, I will uh, do the same mixture, slightly darker, plus some purple, I believe it's dioxazine purple, plus some burnt umber to make it look a bit duller and let's see yeah i don't want it to be as dramatic as in that picture i want something softer but i see that uh, my blue okay maybe just maybe let's see mm, yeah Let's go with that. So uh, again, I am moving on very quickly. So uh, this is the, the mid, mid value. I will not do as much contrast as in the original uh, photograph. And I add some variation so in some points I add more purple, in some points I will add some more ultramarine, and this way this whole background will not be a uniform and boring. Yeah, this is the last thing you want actually okay i'm talking about myself so yeah i don't want my painting to be boring and generally <laughs> sometimes i'm just like uh, it was fun to paint but it's just boring okay so there are those taller taller trees on that rock and i will indicate them maybe not as pronounced i want them subdued but Let's say like this. Okay. And uh, with acrylic underpainting, it's n it gives you a nice base. So if you paint quickly, sometimes the canvas white canvas would um, 
show through and I don't like that effect. It looks like it's the, the, the painting has holes. So that's why I prefer at least gray underpainting. So, you know what? I will probably take a bigger brush. And this is the biggest one. Okay, so what I will do is... Never do the same. So this is again, this is a cheap household brush. I will, because I want to do it as fast as possible. Yeah, this is dioxazine blue, oh, purple. Okay, more purple. And I will also use Persian blue for the trees that are in the bottom and, um, and okay let's say probably. so I don't use solvents and I am struggling but um, I just uh, I have headaches when I do use solvents so, unfortunately, I cannot be free like some other pain painters. I think I have allergies and um, solvents don't work for me. Unless I absolutely have to use solvents, I try to stay away from them. So, the, the, I am not committed to the same shapes, that's why I, um, I paint over this tree in the background, in the foreground, and again, I'm just this is what's happening. I am using purple, ultramarine, and uh, some very little Prussian blue because it actually darkens uh, darkens the painting. And um, I might add some uh, some trees in here or I might just leave it as is. I will see if this is the case uh, a bit later. So I want to darken this area to allow some variation. And I basically I mix colors on the palette. This is not a huge sin. Okay, and there is a, some variation. We can add some darker colors in there and see if it all works out. Aha, uh -huh, one more thing. Because there will be snow on this uh, tree. I want that snow to move the tree closer to us and this uh, this is why I add uh, that shade in the in the background. So that is uh, I am painting. Probably I should turn off my camera so that you can see or move it like this. 
Okay, I'll move it like this. And then I'll keep moving it. So. Yeah, and I, when I was uh, under, doing this underpainting in acrylics, I um, was uh, looking at the shapes of the trees and um, verifying whether this shape works or not. So since again, I want this tree, this tree that is not very visible in this photograph, I want to make it stand out because of the snow on the branches. I darken the areas where this tree meets the background rocks and to add some interest just don't make those marks very similar to each other okay that's it not many details in the corners Let's see, and now the tree, the whole the tree. So um, I will try to find how light, okay, yeah. And this is again, this is what I like about uh, painting without um, solvents is the thickness of the paint. Once you learn how to make it work for you, it's actually very fun to work. Okay, now I need to find an image of the tree. Look at all right. So yeah, uh, it has. I don't know what kind of tree it is. I saw that in s fall and in spring photographs from that area. Uh, and I believe it's um, a sort of um, aspen-like, but aspens are different, I don't know, truly, I have no idea, so I'm just creating an effect of multitude of branches and then I will take one thinner branch oh s thinner brush sorry uh, and um, go in with a thinner brush and paint in the Yeah, this is counterintuitive, but um, I remember I couldn't figure out how grown-up painters, when I was a, a beginner, I couldn't figure out how they create the trees without painting every brush. So th that, that took me a while to figure it out. But now I know that you just should take 
the largest brush possible. for the task and again uh, since I'm making it up um, I just know the logic of how lighting works and uh, normally the top parts of uh, those bigger branches catch more light because still uh, sky is the lightest part and now I see that those trees are too dark but again I am not working there before I finish this tree hold on a second my camera is out of focus I'm sorry guys. How do I Wait. Oh. I guess this is where we are anyways. So um that does look like multitude of branches and again uh, on in the bottom of the tree there is not much light and it's just in the whole contrast actually it's quite dark in there so I don't have to describe everything the imagination of our viewers is a very powerful tool and it will help them figure out what is happening there again since I know that this is Prussian blue ultramarine and uh, dioxys in purple I don't worry if I need to go there with a small brush, I can make the exact same mixture because unlike acrylics, oils do have the same color when wet and dry. it for the tree we're not going to do every branch just yet because this is the stage of blocking in and let's move on now I think I will do this tree in two approaches. I will first do the darkest shape and then put on snowy branches. Same as with those three. Yeah. So for this, I will use the. Um, that is dark verides plus plus Prussian blue plus teeny teeny tiny and 
the burnt umber just yeah I like the subdued and, um, subdued color that we have in the end so again I have some pure dark varieties and then I will have more Prussian blue It's important not to make the same kind of marks but also I am looking at the character of those branches and they are um, they're like uh, upside down hearts heart shapes so this is what I am trying to keep in mind when laying in this darker uh, basis for a future uh, snow snowy branches okay i'm not going to do it the same brush but again if you don't have for example Prussian blue no big deal you can mix it make something very similar using uh, for example cobalt blue and a little bit of lamp black so um, I don't see the point in buying every every sh shade, every hue uh, unless you want to save time mixing them and you want to have okay yeah so let's see this is a fun fun little tree and I will develop it a bit later again. I'm just, uh, yeah, like that. I'm trying to recreate some bigger shapes of the tree and we have the darkest dark it's in here it's the trunk of the tree okay and some stuff happening here So I want this painting to be fairly loose and leave a lot to the imagination and the lights in the window and the above the doors to, to be the main compositional center of the painting. Anyways, uh, let's move on. I see something pretty dark there but I don't want to make it too dark uh, and compete with the tree in the back, uh, foreground so on the tree to recede that's why I have less less contrast there and less um, but, but by less contrast I mean the snow on its branches 
won't be as light and the darks won't be as dark so that's the whole gist and i believe we have two trees there so and again i'm not worried about um Now when snow in that on the roof two so that second tree is almost the height of here and we will lay in the darks and later on come back with the yeah with the snow with the shade mixture representing snow okay and now we move on to this tree okay let's do but first I want to, since I have this nice neutral color, So this tree is uh, a bit further than this one and closer than those two. And that's what will make it fairly dark too. So I'm using the same mixture of colors, occasionally mixing in some more viridian or adding more Prussian blue. Actually, I will make it taller and recede. So this way, th these three shapes are different height, and they are not looking too artificial this is actually this is if you analyze uh, paintings uh, which are made by children uh, you can see uh, the tendency to make to organize everything by the height by the shape so they're very good at organizing the and stuff is happening there in the okay 
Okay, I think I will need some ultramarine. So with the snow, when you look at snow in the dusk, it's um, it's fairly similar to the sky color. Um, but in the dusk, it's a bit more cool. That is why we will use, let's say, tallow blue for the ground snow. Oh, but first the chapel. Yeah. Okay, I'll just do the, the shadows under. Okay, this is still blue. And, um, yeah, talking about pigments, I can say that tallow colors are very strong and they are once you learn to mix them, they're pretty cool. Wow, it's already 50. Okay, I'm trying. Uh, probably I will record the finish of the painting separately. Or I'll go through. Okay. Uh, I want this chapel color to be very contrasted. Okay, I guess, yeah, this is where I, I want it to be. Okay, so this is more even purplish than red. But again, we are making a uh, painting that is uh, fairly impressionistic. So I mix, um, that was, oh boy, I cannot remember which red that was, probably, it was uh, Canocridone Deep Pink not probably it was Canocridone Deep Pink because at first I wanted this chapel to be red but then I decided to har harmonize the whole painting in um, purple so yeah this is where I want it to be so this is um not dagger brush, but it's uh, not flat. Uh, I forgot the name of the, sh the brush. This is why I never actually made the live streams. Because when I paint, my brain freezes. I think in terms of visual shapes, and uh, I compare the, okay, hold on a second, I'll move on that really, oh, oops, oops, video capture. Okay, let's go here. Mm -hmm. 
very very dark mm. unidentifiable shade to just create more interest and yes if you look carefully this Chapel is pretty shadowy. Ah, and one more thing. Oh, so this tree doesn't let us see that there is a uh, whatever. I, I I'm afraid I don't even know the name of that uh, architectural element of the chapel, but there is a. Uh, an altar or I don't know what part it is actually I won't even pretend that I did some research and forgot I never knew even in my own language not to say in English and I saw in different uh, photograph uh, where this tree is younger uh, there is a window that goes on the same level that this uh, yellow um, divider. So, I don't know if I will indicate it, but I surely do know that something is happening there. And... Uh, this part is actually probably the darkest. That's why I take pure Prussian blue. Yeah, so. Yeah. To create this illusion of three dimensional shape by means of lights and shadows. So I believe this, um, what would I call it? I'll lighten up it a little bit. This part is the closest, like, it's it's the same depth and it's fairly flat oops here i am i made a mistake but again no problem it all can be corrected I already make room for this light yellow light above the door actually it's quite powerful I should even anyways um yeah and then the rails all laid over. So we continue and proceed as fast as possible to the Yeah, I do believe I'll have to uh, wait until 
the paint is a little bit more thick to lay in snow without having uh, this other colors mixed into it. Anyways, that's it for the red part of the chapel. And now we move on to yellow parts. I don't dry the... I don't even wash the brush. I basically get rid of excess paint. And for my yellows I'll use uh, yellow ochre plus uh, burnt umber plus burnt sienna and this way I will have plus those uh, colors from the pre previous part this way I will have a pretty That's what I'm talking about. But I like it. I just don't like that. Yeah. And uh, again, I will lay over this the window lights once the painting is a bit more dry I will come back and do the lights with a thick brush strokes and that way or I can sh okay once I'm finished with this mixture so I make it more burnt umber and less Ochre for this part because I don't want it to stand out. And again, the layer yeah, it's good enough. focus but it's actually quite a, when you look at it with uh, not through the camera it's quite it stands out because of the difference in hue the cold blues around make this yellow pop fairly easily and again I don't want any rough sharp edges I blur the edges so that the chapel is um, the effect of uh, the dusk is uh, preserved. Alright, and that's almost it for the yellows. So if you look at the painting, uh, uh, at the photograph um, in the left corner, the yellow there is fairly dark. It's darker than the tree behind it. 
That's why I mix a very dark shadow of ochre plus burnt umber plus oh good and this is what you call a happy accident I wanted this part to be darker and now I will also make this Part darker and that's way that's the way architecture works. Alright, so that's it for the yellows. I might Oh, the door. The door and this part of the building are lighter because of this light there. And this is what we'll do. We'll have a ochre plus some very little cadmium red to to make it okay this is my camera okay we are there manual focus and I think there's something wrong with this focus. Uh, uh, uh. So hard to find it. I promise I will do better. So this is... Yellow ochre plus very little burnt umber plus plus burnt oh burnt umber okay, I cannot think um, it's very hard to talk when you're painting I hope the sound is good. Sorry, cannot read the. If if anyone left their comments, I am not able to respond. Anyways, we continue with the yellow of the building. This is like a railing, not right behind me now, it's, I am not an architect in any way, shape or form, so these are darker, and actually, these are even darker. Yet. Okay. Yeah. So that's very dark in here. Okay. We're coming to light on the side. So this part of the yellow structure catches. Okay, All right, 
So now we have to work through the snowy roof. Okay, let me enlarge the gives us inspiration. So as you see there's snow there, snow on this part of the roof, and on that. So this, this, the snow on the triangular parts of the roof, I will lay in while, after the painting is drier. Or maybe I'll try to do it with this. Huh. Okay, let me let me try an experiment with the palette knife. This is what I like about painting. You just learn. Okay, I'll have to work on that technique, but I can correct it with a brush. I see some pure white. But the effect of snow on the roof is definitely achieved. magic and then I'll finish the rest with the dagger brush so I'll get rid of the ochre get some blues Okay, and yeah, that part catches tons of snow too. So we go Portland gray plus titanium white plus uh, ultramarine blue. And again the same, maybe a bit more, 
no even more titanium white and ultramarine. Plus, this part also catches tons of, what, I'll do this, okay, this is a gamble, but, let's do it, yeah, this is how you create that, okay, uh -huh, and the banister, plus this, this is pure white, this part of the roof, the brim of the roof, I don't know what you call it, also catches tons of white, tons of snow, and um, Oh, I forgot about the door, huh? How could I? But, okay, the banisters. So the, the color of the steps under the snow is the same goldish yellow color that we have in the door and huh, talking about the door okay I'll have to do the snow first oh and this snow does have tons of yellow on it because of the light Then I'll move in with some other yellowish. So colors of the snow. This is the lightest, lightest part of the lit snow. The top step top of the banister and then I just want to contrast it okay okay get rid of the yellow white on the paintbrush so I wipe it and I'll do the door and uh, I, th I think I forgot about the door because it was just a totally different color of the yellow yes you have to take some white and then the uh, burnt uh, umber plus uh, cadmium red plus the, the yellow ochre let's see how it yeah it's quite light and this is how we like it so the door is pretty I just don't like that I have pure cadmium there Okay, so that's the door, and um, let's make this door knob, and um, some structural elements of the door. 
Leave it shadow. And then, actually this door is quite darker towards the bottom. Okay. And now, let's do the, the light of the lantern. Weirdly enough, it almost matches the the color of the door. I will change it a little bit though. So now the brush doesn't carry any color and and correct the okay. So now the door looks dory. And uh, I forgot to... Okay, hold on a second. And this is... So this line between the snow and the roof is too bold. That's why I come in with an empty brush and basically mix only the area where the two shapes meet and this is how I make it softer and I am going to do the same on the smaller triangle okay And now the top of the roof. Oh, and this part, okay. Before I forgot, before I forgot. So that's gray. Gray is basically a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of purple in our case because the blue is exceedingly cold we don't want a greenish color so So the top of the roof is a little bit darker than, actually a lot bit darker than the trees. And I don't want that shape to be super bold. So I intentionally make it blurry. And now I add some Titanium white plus. Okay, it's gotta be, it's gotta be lighter than the trees. And ultramarine. So ultramarine plus 
very close a little bit. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, it stands out just enough. And again, this is what I'm doing. I am doing the roofs. And it's got some architectural elements such as a little Probably, if I were there, I would know why snow is on the sides of the shape. But we are quickly getting closer to the finish. And again, I kind of got rid of too much light. I still want this geometry to come through. Okay. Not enough. Okay, once again, I want this. Alright. There we go. And now to the most fun part. It's the ball cadmium. And actually, the first instinct would be take cadmium light but nope i am taking cadmium yellow deep and with white it will give me this nice and warm and this is how i want the light to stand out because cadmium yellow medium, it's a lot colder with white. White color does make um, white paint makes uh, colder mixtures of any color. So I'm taking pure titanium white mix it with a little bit of okay it's i guess it's too bright but i will leave it there and now i will add more cadmium yellow deep is like that. I don't know what's... Actually, I think they changed it through the years. And, um... Uh, yeah. Alright. And now let's go to more cadmium less white and let's hint that something is happening in those windows
a symmetrical and I want some very, very warm light in the window to draw attention there. to do in here because I want the light to So there is the side window. We can make the slide by means of some. I don't know if I want it or not. Let's say, let it stay there. What this? Oh, huh. Now the snow. Where are we? It's one hour and thirty minutes. I'll try to make it fast. Um. So the snow in the foreground and the snow on the trees. The snow on the trees, uh, and correction of the snow on the roofs, and will come tomorrow. And I will just upload a picture of the complete painting which I will do off offline and now let's go like so so this is as far as I remember okay this is greenish uh oh but it's not a big deal because viridian green is notoriously bluish and I even want it that way uh, I want some variation in the sky So illusion of detail is a very interesting effect. It's um you can achieve it with again a big brush or even a palette knife, but um just don't over blend. And let those, uh, what did Barbara say? Happy accidents? Let them happen. And again, this greenish that I struck there, it's, uh, it's quite okay because the, of the yellow light in this area.
It's interesting. It's okay. Let's have some illusion of multitude of smaller branches that are happening there. It's uh, winter dusk. Light is pretty poor. Actually, you can treat snow almost as a source of light. Okay. So, let's go with some... So, I like this effect. The branch is almost touching the the snow. Okay. Focus. Come on, I need to figure this out. I'll probably let it do out of focus. Then it will just get blurry with every with every Okay, so what I see is that this white on the tree is just too white. I'll subdue it a little bit so that the tree recedes behind the church. And I basically I take a brush and I beat that white with some some blue. I don't blend it as much, but I just want the tree to step behind. There is enough contrast between the bra branches and the background. I'm just killing that super sharp contrast. I can add some here and there. Yeah, like so. All right, and now I can add some trunk shape. Blur some lines. Anyways, okay. Yeah, and this is probably is too much. Yeah, too much contrast there. So I should. should go in and um, yeah. okay. 
And actually it's quite, looking on your painting through the camera, through the video recording, is quite helpful. It makes me, uh, it, it gives the ability to quote unquote see the painting from far away. So, okay, where I, where was I? The dark of the tree trunk. Yeah, let's come back. Yeah, like so. Surprising how this tree trunk is actually very thick. I looked at the photographs through the years and um, even when this tree was shorter than the chapel, <laughs> the tree trunk was surprisingly thick. Uh, okay. Okay. The lights hold. Oh, this. The cherry on top. Okay, it's too much contrast, but... I wanted to do this with a stiffer brush. Just cut off the tree from yeah, and this way this steeple. No, what do you call it? Steeple comes forward. Anyways. So, it's almost from start to finish, the only thing, maybe I'll try, I'll try to do it right now. Okay, let's take this ultramarine blue, because I seem to have run out of it, and let's throw some snow on those evergreen trees. Plus whatever was on the brush. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It's ah uh, no, it's too light. Okay. Let's yeah. Somewhere there. And let's do those branches like so. shapes and we will help them find their love <laughs> okay. um, so some are bigger some are connected some follow some patterns. So those lower branches are actually not that. Okay, 
Okay, I'll do this tree first because it's least contrast. Let's go. So, and actually, since it's on the edge of a shape, it shouldn't draw too much attention. So, it basically, what I do is I'm trying to avoid homogeneous marks and just hint that there is something. The snow is lighter than the shadow behind the tree. That's the main gist of this whole situation. So while some shapes do repeat in nature, I wouldn't do the same on the canvas. The repetition is not always good. I mean, not repetition, imitation, imitating what you see on the Okay, and now some variation. So a nice strike with uh, lighter shadow of snow somewhere, not everywhere. Some branches do catch more light than the others for some reason. They're just probably protruding a little bit more. Okay. And then this tiny, tiny tree. too much with those. Okay, just avoid. And again, imitate snow on top of the branches. However, Possible. All right. Now let's go back to this closest tree. So it does have some fairly repetitive snow shapes, but too much contrast it um, conflicts with the light 
So what I will do, although I like the brush stroke, but I will get rid of those. Basically what I'm doing is I'm beating on top of the snow, just increasing the size of the snow branches. Oh, and there is one. Yeah, like so. Okay, coming up. So the higher we go, the smaller the snow patches on those branches are and the less so here I just and I guess we are getting very close to to the Second, did I forget something? No, I think that's it. So, um, I will refine some edges, but basically, this this is the finished painting, as you see it. Just some minor details so that they make more sense and yes i'm sorry for the focus i will change the settings of the camera and uh, thanks for watching blessings and uh, yeah look out for more christmas videos oh hold on a second i'll turn take a better picture of it and upload it on my social media find me on Instagram find me on Facebook I'm Tanya Rouser art and see you in another video bye bye